Good morning, everyone. We're here today to remember and to celebrate the life of Fenimore Sydney Hater, affectionately known as Fen or Dad. Born the 6th of May, 1940, laid to rest on the 17th of June, 2016. On behalf of the family, thank you for being here with us this morning. We uh, appreciate the support and your presence as we remember Fen and as we comfort and console the family. And to the family members, we extend our heartfelt condolences as a church family for your loss. I'm going to invite you to uh, stand with us as we sing this song, uh, Blessed Assurance, and um, then we will have prayer together. It's in your program on the inside. today under unpleasant circumstances. We're here today because of the tragedy that we call sin, because of the tragedy that we call death, because of the tragedy that this world brings us, such brokenness and loss and separation. But we are here today, Lord, because in the midst of the grieving, there is joy. There is remembering your kindness and your goodness to this planet and to our lives in bringing Fen into our circle of influence. We're here together, Lord, as a church family and as a biological family. We're here because we want to say thank you. Thank you for the time that Fen has been with us, for the time that we have had with him. And of course, we are here, Lord, because we need healing. And we invite your presence as we have sung the song, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. We invite your presence to keep uppermost in our minds that indeed Jesus is ours and indeed Jesus is Fen's. That Fen was held in the arms and in the hands of Jesus. And because of that, there is blessed assurance. 
So be with us this morning. Be close to this family. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Thank you. We're going to invite Eleanor to come up. And um, she's going to share with us the life sketch very bravely. Um, and Lou is just standing by her side because he's the backup. Thank you all for being here today. Fenimore Sydney Hayter, born the 6th of May 1940 in Escort, Natal, South Africa, to George and Beatrice Hayter. Fen was the eldest of six children, four sisters, one brother, Virginia, Marjorie, Norma, Noel, and Lynette. Fen grew up in Greytown, inland of Durban, and went to junior and senior Greytown schools. Fen had a photographic memory, so school was a breeze for him, as he didn't have to study, merely reading over his subject a day or two before exams. His passion was maths, and he is often called upon to explain to fellow class pupils during lesson time. Fen was involved in scouts, which he thoroughly enjoyed. He was a drummer for the school cadets. In his final year of school, Fen was a prefect, and he passed his final exams as ducks of the school and went on to study mining engineering. Sadly, his dad died about three or six months after Fen had left for the mines. So at 18 years, he left his studies to come home and look after his mum and siblings and started working at the bank, ending his lifelong dream to be an engineer for the sake of his family. Later, he moved into short-term insurance and he applied for all exams and obtained several diplomas and his ACII from Britain. From Durban, he was transferred to Peter Maritzburg office as assistant manager and later was made manager where under his leadership, it grew into a major company. Fenn had extremely high principles and values and was held in high respect and regard for them by fellow insurance companies and brokers. Fenn's generosity, kindness and helpfulness to others was amazing. He was so gifted and was able to turn his hand to any DIY job from fixing cars um, for his friends and to building, tiling, plumbing, electrical, renovating bathrooms for the older aunts and uncles and on and on the list goes. Finn loved to go driving, so we traveled the length and breadth of South Africa with our caravan. The greatest and most wonderful blessing in Finn's life was his family, Gareth, Darren, and myself. He always put us first in all things. He was adamant that I stayed at home to care for our sons. They went to Merkiston Prep School for boys for junior school and Fenn tutored the young boarders twice a week during the evening prep and homework time. He so enjoyed those times sharing his skills. When he was 49, he was baptized with Gareth at the Trelawney Church in Peter Maritzburg. Fenn was transferred to Johannesburg after being in Peter Maritzburg for 17 years. Johannesburg was not a good place for us and after three years, we moved back to Durban. When he retired at 60, as all had to do in the new South Africa, he went and joined, in, sorry, he went and joined a broking firm until our move to New Zealand. We were so looking forward to our new life and exploring this beautiful land. Finn took up new hobbies in earnest and his love of wood, woodwork produced some beautiful articles. Photography featured prominently and some of his photos were used for a, tour, a tourist brochure. After two wonderful years, free to enjoy our golden years, Finn had a mental breakdown six years ago. Two months ago, he was diagnosed with colon cancer. We prayed often that the Lord would free him from pain. He underwent surgery on the 8th of June, but sadly, pneumonia had set in and organ failure was taking place. 
Our great and awesome Heavenly Father answered all our prayers. As Fen suffered no pain and fell asleep peacefully, looking forward to the resurrection morning and the happy return of our Lord and Master Jesus Christ and all our loved ones. Thank you. <laughs> In a moment or two, we're going to open the floor for any of you who would like to share just a brief story or thought uh, with the family, just a minute or two. But before that, we're going to let the family, um, the boys, speak to their dad's remembrance. Gareth? Mom, you've given me a tough act to follow. Lou, would you come stand by me, please? <laughs> um, I'm still in the, in the process of actually writing out this speech, so that's why I've got the pen here, so just bear with me. <laughs> um, most of you sitting here in, from Whangarei never actually met Dad, the Dad that we knew all our lives. So I'm going to try and give you a bit of a, an idea of, of who he was. Um, I can sum Dad up in, in one word, which is time. He had time for family, always time to help people, time to teach, and always with a sparkle in his eye. This is where I start deviating from what I've written down. So I'm going right to the end here, where I sum Dad up. I'm just going to read a few facts about him before carrying on. Um, Dad spoke English, Afrikaans, Zulu, Fanny Galore, I see a few eyebrows going up there. That's like a mixture of, um, I think, English, Afrikaans, Zulu, Kosa, and German as well. His passions were maths and statistics, and he really had a mind for that. He did amazingly well at school, and, and then for the time that he was at university, he did brilliantly as well. Um, because he couldn't carry on in his, in his career as, a, as an engineer, um, he looked for outlets where he could use those skills, and that usually came down to, to helping and teaching others who weren't getting the concepts as quickly as they wanted to. Um, he helped uh, one of his nephews, Wayne, um, and he's now a headmaster of one of the leading schools in South Africa. He's helped so many others over the years, and as Mom said, he, he even uh, tutored at school for the, for the long-term boarders as well. Um, Dad was always extremely optimistic. Absolutely nothing could get him down. Absolutely determined. Um, in fact, just before he broke down, I was walking with him on the beach, and I just said, Dad, I look up to you so much because you just never give up. He's also extremely naughty, uh, especially in his youth. I may share one or two stories here, but there's probably dozens of others that I cannot share at all. Uh, but speak to me afterwards. Um, Dad is always the, the quintessential gentleman. Um, when he worked, when he went to work, he was always impeccably dressed, um, suit, tie, everything perfect, not a hair out of place. And in, in doing his work, fastidious and um, very, very good with what he did, but treated everyone with absolute respect, with manners, with courtesy. Um, and one thing he couldn't tolerate was when people swore around women, he, he didn't handle that. Dad was an athlete. Um, I think his, his claim to fame was really the hurdles. He, he shone in that, uh, but also sprinting and a few others as well at school. Car fanatic, he absolutely loved his cars. And then until he met mom, I think cars were his absolute passion in life. Um, after he met mom, they, they were slightly demoted. Um, but he even went to the extent of, I mean, his cars were so clean that he used to uh, clean the suspension of the car with a toothbrush as part of his cleaning regime. You know, you just full on.